Welcome back to the Sandy and the Coach Show. We've been uh, away a little bit. My partner has been traveling the world, but I'm back. I'm Eric Sondheimer of the Los Angeles Times. And I'm Coach Steve Miller, ready to banter. Okay, ready to banter. That's like, uh, that's like misleading everybody. You banter every day of every day, correct, Coach Miller? Bantering is my middle name, Steve yeah. Banter Miller. Yes, and embellishing too, with everybody will soon learn about that. We got some great issues involving basketball. Number one is Will LaMelo Ball, the former Chino Hills player out of Australia right now, be one of the first three players taken in the NBA draft. I say yes, and Coach Miller, of course, is wrong. He says no. Yes, I have a different opinion. I have not seen him play every day like you have in Australia, but. <laughs> Knowing the competition in Australia where you could do anything and get away with it, I think that he is a big gunner. I, I cannot believe what you're saying, Coach Miller. Not only is he going to be one of the top three picks, he's going to be one of the most talked about individuals in the NBA. Him and Brother Lonzo are going to be just create some great excitement. He's a nice kid. He's grown to 6'8". He can play basketball. He's shown that he can be a team leader. He can be a point guard. He can shoot when he needs to, and he plays defense. I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, so all I saw him play at Chino Hills the last time that he really played against players, he couldn't guard anybody, including his grandmother. He's he grown up. Every, he shot every single time. He has grown, uh, but that doesn't make him a player. Okay, so you're not picking him in the top three picks. You think he might be a first-round pick? Yes. Okay, I'm glad you think that because I think we're going to see two lottery picks out of Chino Hills, LaMelo Ball and Oniko Okongwu. Okongwu is a real player. He's played against great players at SC. He demonstrated that in the big games, he steps up. LaMelo has not played against anybody. He's a physical talent, but he has not played against anybody. I'm going to give LeVar Ball your, your phone number. What, what, you live in Studio City on Babcock, I think. That's what it is? Okay, just wait till I, you get – you're going to get it from LeVar. Just remember that. He's from Canoga Park. He knows where you live. Well, he knows because he played against North Hollywood High, which I coached against him. Well, good for him. He's going to dunk over you, and, and you will, you'll be in big trouble, Coach Miller. So let's go. Moving on. You know, back in 2003, I happened to be working on a TV game with you. And we, I will never forget this because it's one of the stupidest comments I have ever heard from a commentator. It was Westchester playing and Trevor Ariza who would go on to be the city player of the year and an outstanding NBA three-point shooter. You happened to say, I would pay somebody to let Trevor Ariza shoot a three. It's unbelievable that you would have said that because Trevor Risa has made you look stupid ever since. Will you okay. apologize for that? Well, do I get to speak or do you speak for four are days? You going just... to are you going to apologize for that comment? No, I'm not. Because here is the meaning of the comment. Please let me speak, dear Eric. I do have a, a, a button to, to cut you off, so be careful. I do. I'm surprised I got in here. But let me explain this, that we have two evils here. You let the biggest guy on Westchester shoot a three, which he's a 28% shooter. And when he shoots a three, he's out of rebound position. He doesn't drive. He doesn't post up. So I would rather him shoot a three than do all those other things. Plus, when he shoots a three, he has to play defense at the other end on a fast break. So that is the best of two worlds. I don't want him shooting a layup. I don't want him rebounding the ball. I want him shooting a three at 28%. Thank you. Can you please admit that you made a terrible mistake by making that comment? I would pay Trevor Arusa to shoot a three. He just became one of the best NBA players for shooting threes. No, he's a pretty good shooting three. He's a very good NBA player. But that is in high school. Playing at Westchester High School, it's not playing in the NBA. He worked on his shot. 
Well, I can see why you never won a Division One championship well, coaching. I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Okay, on another subject, Johnny Jashang out of Harvard-Westlake announced that he's going to UCLA. He was a freshman at Kentucky. He can shoot. He plays defense. How do you think he'll fit in with the UCLA Bruins? Anybody that can shoot can fit in. <laughs> so I am not sold on his defense either, but but the uh, coach can really teach defense. So I, I think he's a very good addition to UCLA, and he'll really help. The season ended abruptly, and we, we failed to point out the different records between Polly, my alma mater, and North Hollywood. How many wins did North Hollywood have this year, Coach Miller? Well, let's see. They fell short of their goal. How many wins did North Hollywood have this year? Do I have to repeat it 10 times? Less than 15. <laughs> let, let me point it out to you. They were 1 and 26 or 25? I have no idea what that other number is. Okay, uh, they, well, in other words, they won one and Polly won the league title. So I just would like to point that out to you. Yes, but Polly was the favorite to win the Division 42. And what happened? Well, I think you seeded them incorrectly. That's what happened. Oh, how yeah. did we see them? You, you're the one who was on the seeding committee. You always try not to, to, to be nice to Polly because they always used to beat you when you were coaching. You know what? Polly had everything you need, and they got a six foot eight transfer in just to help them along, and they couldn't win the Division Three title. Okay, well, there's, they well, did have more than one victory this year, so I think that's better than the Huskies. But anyway, that's for another subject matter. And finally, do you have anything that you can suggest to players who are kind of stuck at home trying to wait to see if this thing ends and they can go play, whether travel ball or for their high school teams at some point this summer? Uh, well, number one, they should be lifting some kind of weights at home, running around the block in their area. They should be doing, they can go to a park, uh, take a basketball and a mask and shoot around forever. There's no reason they can't shoot now. If other people come to the park, they got to go find another basket. You don't want to be within six feet. Of course, a lot of players that you know don't guard within six feet anyway. Well, we, we happen to know that you uh, always like to go traveling and you have a problem now. You're stuck at home. You can't go to Africa. So who are you driving crazy by staying home now? My wife. Yeah, that, I feel sorry for her because you, unfortunately, won't be going to Africa this year, but I hope things get a little bit better and the Huskies can get at least one more victory next season for basketball. Well, Eric, you failed to mention that that one win came early and they peaked very early in the season. Yes, I do know they led Polly briefly, but that didn't help. But that we thank you for uh, tuning in to our latest version of Sandy and the Coach Show. Soon we'll come up with some more interesting things than you're questioning Trevor Reese's three-point shooting. In high school, yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eric.